So, we've been talking about uh, rates of reactions in a chemical change, and we've so far been looking at it in terms of rate order of the individual reactants, but there is another way that we can analyze reaction rate, and we can do it stoichiometrically if we have a, a set rate of either a reactant or a product in a fixed situation of a chemical reaction under whatever particular uh, temperature and other conditions that have been controlled. So let's recap what a rate is in a chemical uh, change. It is the change in moles of either a reactant or a product over time. And generally we think of time in seconds. It doesn't have to be that way, but that's the uh, time unit that is most used in problems such as these. We also need to recap what a balanced equation is. It is an individual molecular relationship, but it is also a molar relationship. And that, of course, is the heart of all stoichiometry, is rebalancing a molar relationship for a, an actual real-life amount of a reactant in a product or a reactant to another reactant. So we have a situation here where we're synthesizing ammonia from, from uh, nitrogen and hydrogen. And so let's say that we know that nitrogen in this reaction is disappearing at a rate of 6.44 times 10 to the negative 3 moles per second, or 6.44 millimoles per second. So because we are thinking of this in terms of moles per second, then there must be an equivalence based on this balanced equation for ammonia and for hydrogen. The first question we have here is that we're thinking of it in terms of how much ammonia is being produced on a, a molar level as nitrogen disappears because as product is appearing, reactants are disappearing. So we just simply do our classic mole-to-mole -mole stoichiometry, unknown over known. This is what we learned months ago and we get 1.23 times 10 to the negative second moles per second of ammonia is actually forming. Now we can also uh, work it out for the third, um, the third species in this reaction, the hydrogen. And so uh, since it's the unknown, we can either use this value of the nitrogen as our known or we could use the ammonia as a known. It doesn't matter because if we simply are able to preserve the molar relationship unknown over known, it shouldn't matter which known we use because we're looking at this same particular, this reaction from different angles, but it's still the same reaction. So the effects are, are, are relative for, to each other. As these reactants disappear at certain molar levels, this product appears at a certain molar level. So I just took ammonia as our known, it doesn't matter, did our unknown over known, and here is our, our rate of disappearance of hydrogen. So it kind of makes sense that on a molar level, we're losing hydrogen at three times the rate that we are losing nitrogen, and we, if, uh, if that would mean also that, that ammonia is appearing uh, at two-thirds the rate of hydrogen's disappearance or two times the rate of nitrogen's disappearance. It doesn't matter really whether we're looking at from the vantage point of a reactant or a product. Molar relationships are what they are. So in conclusion, this is another way that we can look at reaction rates in the, in the uh, form of a stoichiometric value because reaction rates 
imply molar level change, and stoichiometry is also molar level in its analysis, this works as another method of looking at a reaction.